My name is Kari Nattila and I work in the Finnish League for Human Rights. We are a, a non-governmental human rights organization working in Finland, uh, in Helsinki. And we are working to promote human rights in Finland. We study human rights situation in Finland. We try to prevent human rights violations within Finland and, and so forth. So mainly we look at the Finnish human rights situation. But of course we are also network, networking with the friends and sisters and brothers in human rights organizations. human rights situation in Finland. I think in the past um, decades it has progressed steadily. Um, minorities are better recognized, better res their rights are better respected um, uh, in the law. And we have also fought hard, for example, to, to have a, a strong anti-discrimination legislation in Finland. We, along with other NGOs, um, in many ways economic and social rights, if you look at uh, the global scale, they are well well protected and respected. However, I think our country right now is an interesting example of a country that can also go backwards. So it's an interesting example of, of um, um, how human rights do not necessarily always progress. Um, in our case, Finland has, in the past decades, taken very few refugees um, from the uh, international quotas or through the asylum system. And the numbers have been very low. That's why I think uh, it has been a bit difficult for us as a country to, to accept the fact that now more people are coming also to Finland from Middle East, from from Eastern Africa and from elsewhere. The reactions have been um, in some ways very good. What has been good is that um, the people in Finland, whether it's Finnish people who, have, who were born to Finland or, or migrants who have come to Finland earlier, um, as elsewhere in Europe, people have provided shelter, they have provided uh, material support or to the asylum seekers, whatever they can. Now it's, Christ, uh, it's winter time, it's very cold, so people have been providing simple issues such as shoes and warm clothes. But of course that's all voluntary and, and the, the very, it's very valuable and it's important and it shows that most people are actually able to understand that people need to flee, they need to flee war or other kinds of conflicts. And, and there's a lot of, lot of sense of uh, sort of shared responsibility. However, the government at the moment is making it more difficult for people to enter the country. Um, I feel and I am worried of, of the fact that Finland, as long as other Nordic countries such as Sweden and Denmark, are trying to um, make it more difficult for people to seek asylum, although it's their right to seek asylum. And also it seems that Na countries are reacting on a national basis, whereas I think now European Union countries should really look for common solutions and, and maybe take a breath and try not to react or over overreact too quickly. Uh, a lot of negotiation at the EU level should now be done to, to find out common solutions. Whether the question of, of more asylum seekers entering the country, whether it's dividing the country, I do not believe so. However, the problem is that the media, I think, loves the idea in a way of, of division, of, of this sort of dividing into two. I don't think it's real. I think most things uh, and people living in Finland are actually quite neutral or, or quite understanding of the situation. But because media today, uh, through social media and, and other, other media, uh, needs strong uh, stories. So it's, it's quite tempting, I think, for media to sort of repeat the idea that Finland is divided into two. It's, 
is divided into races and, and tolerant people. I don't think that is the case, but I, I, I am concerned of the temptation of, of sort of saying that there is a, the country is divided, whereas it is not. I think um, minority of people actually have racist, very strong racist sentiments, and but they, they have a strong voice because media also gives, gives them a strong voice. Uh, and of course, social media is a good tool for those who, who want to propagate um, hate against any group, whether it's asylum seekers or other minorities or, or any other group, whether it's women, for example. Also, something that is very interesting in current situation, at least in Finland and possibly everywhere in Europe, is the kind of combination of hate speech against both women and immigrants. So it's this classic example of, 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 of <laughs> hatred against women meeting hatred against migrants uh, or other minorities for that matter. An issue that is pressing everywhere in the world, but it's also pressing as a human rights violation in Finland is gender-based violence, and I would especially want to mention violence against women. Uh, we have very high levels of violence against women in Finland, and unfortunately, despite the fact that we know what the problem is, it's very well known now that the figures are very high. There are not enough services, the, the authorities are not providing, for example, enough shelters for victims of, of violence and, and also other services are not there. You do not necessarily get um, um, help or support in your own language, for example, which means that migrant women have a specially difficult situation. But also I would want to raise disabled women who, fa who face more violence than other, than other women statistically. So, um, violence against women really is an acute problem and, and unfortunately is something that the government could easily um, prevent much better than it's doing now. As many others, I became interested in, uh, in, in equality of the world when I was very young. Um, I was interested at the age of, of 12 or 13 or so, especially in the human rights situation of, of South Africa of that And I was sort of trying to participate to the extent I could as a very young, young girl uh, in the anti-apartheid movement, which was strong in, in Europe, Northern Europe at that time. But that was a long time ago. But then gradually, I guess I have always been um, doing either activist work as a volunteer or as an activist, or then gradually as a professional in this field. I worked on women's rights, uh, children's rights, and then uh, labor rights. Um, these are all my passion, and, and now more genera uh, generally human rights. And why? why is it? I guess it's just so that some of us have this urge to try to do something um, of the inequality that exists in the world. Um, and of course, human rights violations are an embodiment and expression of the inequality that, that, that takes place, that exists between different individuals, between different groups. And I just have the urge to do something about it. I think in terms of Finland, something that is actually progressing is uh, the rights of sexual and gender minorities in the past, let's say, 10 years. Um, we have good um, le legislative development, so the rights of gay and lesbian people are better protected, even there is a lot of work to, to be done and we are doing it together with other entities all the time. 10 years ago, the kind of um, openness to even talk about these minorities was very limited. So there you actually see a lot of change. Of course, this change is a result of so many people actually fighting for the rights of sexual and gender minorities for decades. So whenever you, you have a concrete step, for example, that, um, that the recent decision of, of 
um, equal marriage rights to also sexual minorities. Um, it, so much work was done before that. So actually most people see the end result without knowing that activists work for decades to, to read somewhere like this. So there I see concrete development. We said, uh, for example, the rights of trans persons in Finland are violated against, for example, their, their, their right uh, to reprodu reproduction is, is, is heavily violated in Finland. Thank <laughs> you.